Just about everyone has an opinion about cryptocurrency, but regardless of how you feel about investing in it, there are over 10,000 types of cryptocurrency and thus a lot of data available. The number of analysis and modeling ideas are nearly endless. For today, I'm going to show you how to use the basics of the CoinGecko Data API to extract real-time cryptocurrency data, and then we'll output it into a graph that updates every time we run the script. We could do this in many different programming languages, and I'm sure we could even do this in Excel, but this kind of data scraping is optimal in Python. Now, if you use a different language like R or Java, just copy the code in the chat GPT and ask it to translate it for you. That way you can still follow along even if you don't even code in Python. Okay, let's get started here. If you're interested in getting into top 20, 50, or 100 cryptos, for example, we'll get to that a little bit later. I'm gonna start off with a script I made that helps you find the IDs for a custom list of cryptocurrencies that we're interested in. So let's go ahead and open it. I'm not gonna go over this code, but I will provide a link to it in the video description. So now that we have the script open, let's take a look. For this video, we're gonna to need to use pip to grab two modules that don't come standard with Python. So if you're in Windows, go ahead and open the command prompt, CMD there. So let's go ahead and type in pip install request and a space and matplotlib. I already have these, so we're all set, so we can keep going here. But all we care about right now is finding the IDs for our list of cryptocurrencies. As you can see here, I have a list of cryptos for which I want to search for the ID, and we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. You can change this to whatever you want. Okay, let's go ahead and run this and see what we got here. So you can see there's a bunch of results here, more than you might have expected here. So let's first find Litecoin here. We want to find the regular Litecoin ID. So it's right there. I'll do the same thing for Ethereum. Okay, it's right there. And then finally, we want to do this for Bitcoin. And you can see there's a bunch of different Bitcoin variations here. And once we find these IDs, we're going to send this as part of a request to the CoinGecko API. All right, let's go ahead and open our second script here. And this is what's going to do all the magic here. Okay, let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, we're gonna start with the request module and that's gonna actually make the request to the API. And matplotlib, as you might have expected, that's gonna plot our data into a graph. Date time is gonna allow us to properly format and work with our dates. We're gonna start our definition right here, get crypto data. So we want this URL. This is the CoinGecko API URL. And so we're gonna need that as our base URL right there. These are the cryptocurrencies that we obtained earlier. So we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. And of course, if you just want to get the top 50, top 20 cryptos, we can do that too. And I'll show you how to do that a little later. So right here, we have our parameters. So we have crypto versus a certain currency. So for example, United States dollar here. So we might find that one Bitcoin is 64,000 USD or United States dollars. You can do other currencies. If you look to the right there, I got you some examples. All right, so this IDs right here, this is going to join these crypto IDs right here, and it's going to put into a comma separated string, basically going to look like it does now in many respects. Now, this is the order, and I have by market capitalization and descending order. There's lots of different ways you can do this. You can do it by the volume. You can do it by how CoinGecko has it. So, for example, like this, you want it in their order. If you look to the right, you can see the different options for that. Since we're only interested in three cryptocurrencies for now, our setting right here basically counts the one, two, three, and make sure that we get three results in a single page. It's basically just a safeguard to make sure that we get as many results as the cryptos that we specified. So three right there. And so since we are only requesting three specific cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, all of them will fit in the first page of results. So we don't really need anything besides one right here. Now, Sparkline, this provides seven-day historical price data. So essentially this, you're not going to get a graph like this. It's going to output as actual data. So you'll see like a value, comma, value, comma, and so on. That's what it's going to look like. So right here, we're going to make our actual request. We have the URL, we have the parameters, and if everything works out well, we'll get a status code of 200, which means it was successful, and we'll get some data in the form of JSON. So if you want to just have a look at this, you can see here's our data right here. We have the Bitcoin. I saw Litecoin right there, uh, Ethereum right there, and so on. We have all this data right here. We're going to parse that and put that into the graph. So I'm going to take this printout right here because we don't really need that unless you want to just take a look at that. And now we're going to extract the names and prices for the bar graph. Here's our names variable right here. It's going through that JSON file. It's getting the names, getting the prices. And right here, this is just a date and timestamp 
for the actual graph, just so we know when we extract the data. So if we got it at 944, 945, et cetera, just so it's extra clear. Now we're gonna actually start plotting in the bar graph right here. So we're setting the figure size right there. You can play around with these if you want. I found something that works good for, you know, three cryptocurrencies, but again, just play around with it. Same here, okay? We're throwing in those names and the prices from right here. And I'm using the sky blue color. You can use different colors if you want. Let's step away from the code for a minute and just take a look at what we've done so far. You can see the snippets of the code with the list of the crypto names and also the prices gathered from the API. In this bar section, we're putting in those lists and I try to color code this so you can see the connection. We're also defining the color of the bars here to sky blue. You can make this whatever you want. But now you have a sense of what we've done so far. Anyway, I thought this might be useful. Let's just go back to our code now. This four bar and bars loop right here is just intended to get the number to show above each bar. This part might appear to be the most complicated part of the code. Maybe it is, but let me just break it down for you. So this part right here is used to place text on the plot at a specific X and Y coordinates. Okay, so this right here, this is retrieving the X coordinate of the left edge of the bar. And then right here, what we're doing is this calculation gets the X coordinate of the center of the bar where the text should be placed. So what we're doing right here, this calculates half the width of the bar. So since the text is supposed to be centered above each bar, adding half the bar's width to the X coordinate places the text at the center of the bar. It's just a fancy way of making sure the text is in the proper place. Okay, this is the Y coordinate of the text, which is the height of the bar. This seems sort of complicated, but what we're doing is first we want to output a dollar sign. We want the numeric value and we want to make sure that the number has two decimals. So $88.34, for example, we want to be able to do that with two decimal places. HA just stands for horizontal alignment and this is in vertical alignment. And so that's what we're doing with center and bottom right there. Okay, from here, it gets pretty easy. We have the title and of course, if you change USD, over here under currency, make sure you change it down here, same down here. So our Y label, our X label, and we're gonna rotate the X axis label so it's just easier to look at. You could play around with this if you want to. We're gonna adjust this to prevent clipping of a label. So what does that mean? In the context of matplotlib, clipping of labels refers to a situation where parts of a label Maybe the X axis or Y axis, anything just gets cut off or it's not fully visible because it's beyond the boundaries of the plot area. So we don't want that to happen. It's just gonna look bad that way. And this is just gonna show us the actual graph and all of our data. And that's really the magic right there. You can also export this to an image if you want. There's a bunch of things you can do. And if for some reason we do have a status code that's not good, that's other than 200, it's gonna print that right there. So you can see the else from this right here, so. And this right here, this is just checking to see whether the script is being run directly or is being imported into another script. I guess that's not really important for the context of this video, but I just wanted to explain that. So when we feel ready, let's go ahead and hit run and let's see what we got. There we go. So we got that price up there. So it was worth all the work, you know, to get that to go above the line. You can see it for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin right there. So let's say we wanna just get the top 20 cryptocurrencies, for example. We wanna get rid of our customized list right here. We wanna get rid of the reference right here. In fact, we're gonna just get rid of this whole line. And this right here, we're gonna switch this to 20. So we probably wanna change some of this stuff down here too. We'll say top 20 cryptocurrency prices in USD. I think we can just leave these two right here though. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and let's see what it looks like. So if you see something like this that looks bad, don't freak out yet, because once you maximize it, it can look totally fine. Of course, you can make some adjustments here. You can mess around with the tax size, you know, how far these are from each other, but this looks fine. This is just 20. If you did 50, you might have to do things a little bit differently, but for 20, this is totally fine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please let me know in the comments and thank you for liking and subscribing. In the meantime, I'll catch you all later. Thanks so much.